ADLR, Administration Data Verbatim Logistic Reboca, or Administration Data Processing Logistics Reboca. Adwords are a fifth generational high command specialist replicas. Adwords are protective Führens Commando Administrator units, and Adler means eagle in German. In game, Adler is one of the primary antagonists, serving as an enemy of sorts for both Elster and Issa. His motives seem to be that he desires for both of them to stop trying to break the cycle. However, he seems unable to offer any real resistance against the two of them, as all the times he fights the duo, he is wounded. Adler is easily one of the most complicated and deep characters in the game, and I am very excited to be able to cover his lore in today's video. So with no more delay, let's just get right into this. We should begin with the basic lore of the Adler units. Adler units are in charge of managing and overseeing all administrative tasks for the entire facility. They have the responsibility of allowing operational command units such as Falk to focus on the direct control of the protector unit. Adler units are designed to work as a direct counterpart to the Falk commanders, serving as their helper by taking care of the necessary paperwork and calculations that is needed for the facility's faci like, ability to work. Adlers are described as being best in isolation. They don't work well with each other. They are designed to be heavily dependent on their Falk units and are deployed in groups of one to two. Specifically, they are dependent on their folks from an emotional standpoint, requiring them for emotional stability. They are also fairly susceptible to bioresonance, making them easy to control, likely an addition that correlates with their dependency on the heavily bioresonant folks. It should be noted they can get bored fairly easily, and require many fetish objects in order to remain stable. However, when we talk about Adler, the majority of people are talking about the S23 Adler that we know and love, known as Adler S2301. This is the one that we're going to spend the majority of the video talking about. And for the sake of this video, when I refer to Adler, I'm going to be referring to this Adler, not the entire, you know, type of replica. We should begin prior to the game. Prior to the events of the game, Adler served as S23's administrator, where he worked on keeping the facility in working order. However, Folk eventually fell ill, and during this time, he would resign himself to his dorms. Here in his dorms, he would write in his diary about the events occurring in the facility prior to the events of the game, as it slowly succumbed to the distortion. These notes portray Adler very different than the one we are used to, one who is scared and doesn't really know what's going on. Over the course of these diary entries, we slowly watch the old Adler turn into the Adler we know by the events of the game. And I'm now going to play some audio of me reading these diary entries in a private video that I already did. So if you've already watched that, feel free to skip ahead to the timestamp noted in the description. First up, we have date, 84216. I've been fascinated by a peculiar piece of furniture I discovered in storage, a strange box with a removable dial in the front that was confiscated from a worker some time ago. I was instantly drawn to it, though I'm not sure why. When I put my ear on the mechanism, I can hear it faintly clicking, like a clock. Here, he's talking about the astrolobe and how it was confiscated by a protector in the past from a random distalt worker. In the next entry, date 84 21 7. Without Calibri's help, it has become harder to coordinate the logistics cadre. If there's anything good to say about that woman, it's how she knows how to make others respect her orders. Despite her miniature stature, I want to see her today but her room is still locked. In this note, he talks about a rank Calibri, seemingly have developed a friendship with this unit before her corruption. He notes how hard it is to control the facility following the loss of this unit. He also states that he tried to go and see her, but that she had locked herself away. This also suggests that sometime between the sixth and the seventh day, the Calibri fell to the corruption. We know the Calibri's fell to the corruption fairly early into this situation, so we are still looking at the early parts of the corruption. And looking in a theory realm, this is most likely the Calibri either in the Calibri dorm, who is locked away in her bedroom, or the Calibri who has locked herself away in the painting room. Either or. Next, the date is 84218. I had a dream tonight, another memory of my gestalt life, I believe. I was wearing my uniform. There was a young woman, her hair white as snow, and I was conducting some sort of test. I had a deck of cards with astronomical symbols on it, and I was asking her to guess which planet I was holding. 
In this note, he's describing what is likely persona degradation or gestalt memory resurfacing, though it could be something else such as keen yellow profile rewriting, or bioresonant memory influencing. It really depends what you know, walk of theory you come from. It seems as though that his old gestalt life, if we believe that this was a gestalt life, was one of an investigator who administered bioresonant tests. It has been theorized that the person he is interrogating is either Arianne or Arianne's mother, mainly her mother because of the timing it would require for that test to be administered. Next we have date 84219. I was playing with that mechanical lockbox again, of which I am now sure is of some kind of astronomical calendar, when I suddenly remembered a conversation I had with another replica when I was inspecting the mining site. However, it was clearly a model I have never seen before, some type of engineer with an orange chest plate. In my memory, she was just another member of our staff, but no such replica was ever stationed on Serpiansk. Replica memory is not the most reliable, they say, but never before have I experienced such a strange phenomenon. In this note, Adela talks about having met Elster, and how she shouldn't have even existed in the facility, yet due to the corruption, he felt as though she had always been there. This is something that is consistent with really how the influence of Elster and Elanya CO is displayed on the facility. Next, date 8421A. That a little enigma of the box can only distract me from the chaos around me so long. All the box contained was a small notebook, of which all the pages turned out to be blank. It has been miserable since our beloved commander has fallen ill. I long for her stern guidance, that overwhelming authority in which she bathes a room. Adler in this room opens the astrolabe and finds nothing of value within, aside from an empty notebook, which we're going to get back to later. Then he states that he misses the commander's guidance, reflecting what the known issues page says about him. The next note, date 8421b. More sick, making my work even harder. How are we meant to shoulder this workload with no reinforcements? My only consolation is that our protector staff decreases, so does the workforce we oversee. While more and more replica end up in the hospital wing, Gestalt workers seem to succumb much too fast for any attempts at treatment. In this note, he states that it's a blessing that people are dying, as it doesn't mean he has to watch over them anymore, or, you know, command them. He also adds that it's becoming impossible to shoulder this without any reinforcements, and that, simply put, the structure of the facility is decaying. He adds that it is impossible to save Gestalt workers once they are infected, which is something that holds true if you read any of the medical database notes which seem to corroborate that evidence. Next note, 8421C, another diary filled, for no benefit of but my own satisfaction. I've ordered, not ordered a new one yet, since I spent my saved ration marks on that marvelous looking fountain pen, but I guess I'll make use of that notebook. He notes how he finished the diary and how he bought a pen to further write more future entries, before deciding to write in that new journal he got from the Astral Loop. It should be noted that this new diary is what all further notes are going to be from, and that this diary is a golden yellow, and we find it within the shrine later in the game. I've started yet another diary. How time flies. The work is dull and monotonous as ever in Serpiansky, but a bright light illuminates my day. Today I was invited to a meeting by Commander Falk, and she was as magnificent as ever. This diary takes place after the prior entries, from the date perspective yet seems to denote events that happened prior to the loss of the facility. It's also the beginning of the loop, suggesting that either Ador has succumbed to the insanity or that the loop's beginning took the facility back by several days. Another alternate perspective to look at this is that this event is much like Elster's memory sequence, in that Adler is having a temporary jump back to the past, much like Elster did either due to bioresonance or whatever else you think is causing the influence on the facility. Next note, date 8421D, another day passes. During my meeting with the commander today, I felt the strangest sensation of familiarity as I sat with her. Sadly, our meeting was interrupted by an unexpected power outage. This note showcases the meeting again, and that Ador did not exactly notice that something was wrong with the repeating of events. It also continues to show that Folk is operating despite falling ill prior, which questions Adler's validity of his statements. This note also notes that the power outages which we see by the events of the game are occurring, showcasing that as the loop continues, the world does change with each turn, something that holds consistent with the Dreamer's Diaries. Next note, date 8421D. Never before have I felt so strongly the sensation of deja vu as I have these past few days. 
At Earth's will we become aware of the cycle. As it continues and marches forwards, he can't help but notice it. Next one. Date 8421D. When I checked the pages of my diary today, I noticed that for some inexplicable reason, I seem to have dated my prior entries with today's date. What an embarrassing mistake. This is the first time that Adar noticed the presence of the cycle directly, showcasing that his understanding of the presence of the cycle requires him to read his diary. Something I'm going to get back to later. Date 8421D. Every day feels like I've lived it before, and even stronger is the sensation that something is somehow just slightly out of place. Adler is getting more and more realization about the nature of the cycle. And that's going to continue in this next note. Date, 8421D. Why is my diary filled with entries I cannot recall writing? Why are they all dated to today? Has the loss of my beloved commander finally gotten to my mind? Am I going insane? I feel what will happen to me if anyone finds out. I'm alone in this. If they discover my notes, I'll be decommissioned too. In this note, he finally fully realizes the nature of the cycle, but also denotes that the commander has fallen sick, suggesting that the cycle is changing over time. It's no longer him having the same meeting as before. He notes that he's afraid of the cycle and what would happen to himself, and believes that he's alone in this situation, which is interesting way to look at the perspective of the cycle because it seems like Adler believes it's just a defect of his own. Date 8421D. Something is wrong, I can feel it. Is this really madness? When I read the pages of my diary, I recall events that never happened, a yesterday that never was, yet it feels as real as the one I actually experienced. This cannot merely be a defect of my mind. In this note, he rejects the results of this, and he rejects that it could be his own insanity and instead is beginning to believe that the loop actually holds some bias in reality. Date, 8421D. Feels as though, in this room, I peer into another version of reality. How, I do not know. Perhaps I, too, have become sick like the others, without realizing, but I will not succumb. In this note, he accepts having fallen sick to the virus, and claims to have seen another version of reality while within this room. It's interesting to think about that idea, that perhaps, thinking about fourth dimensional types of things, this room, and really Serpiency in general, is a convergence of multiple timelines, and thus why the loop occurs. And by being in this room, he is able to see alternate situations of what happened on that day. It's just another way to really approach the loop and think about it uh, from a lore perspective, that using the bioresonance or the King Yellow. Next up. Date 8421D, a slow accumulation of reproduction errors, a gradual corruption of information, a story misremembered, slowly morphing with each retelling like genetic material, mutating and evolving like the replica mind copied over and over from an aging template. In this note, he states more like that cryptic Adler we are used to, rather than the scared and confused Adler that has dominated most of these notes, representing that he is becoming more cynical as time moves forward, no longer afraid that he might be going insane, but rather embracing his insanity and believing that it is the world itself that is wrong and insane. He also draws a connection to the replica's mind, which is really cool to read about because it helps us really understand how from the replica's perspective, they understand they're something that's copied from something that is long gone. They understand they're not exactly brand new creations. We don't really get to see a lot of other perspectives like that in this story. Finally, date 8421D, I do not know, but I will find out. And then the next note, date 8421D, the answer lies below, I can feel it. Someone or something calls for me there in the mine. These notes showcase that Adler has changed, now determined to find answers for what caused this cycle and is willing to descend down in order to find these answers. Impartial knowledge is a theory that's based on these diary uh, entries, and it basically states that Adler only really knows what his diaries tell him. Thus, his knowledge of the loops is heavily flawed, and as of such, taking him as a solid reference for understanding the nature of the loops is a flawed perspective and indicates that his own opinions on the cycle and his statements regarding the fruitless nature of Elster's actions are made without strong knowledge of the truth. This theory can go even further if we consider the answers from Flesh Below theory. This theory states that Adler descended down into nowhere at the end of these diary entries in pursuit of answers, and due to this decision found the scale of his corruption greatly increase, before becoming the Adler we now know who wishes to kill Easter and Elster. Becoming, in the process, by finding these answers, an agent of the King in Yellow. And that is something that is, we're going to get back to. 
One last note to note and talk about prior to the event of the game. Sieben, in her note, details Adler having been lost while she was trying to reinforce the facility, signifying that during the decay of the facility, Adler was not a major help to the other replicas. This is a piece of information that is honestly reinforced by his diary, where he details himself spending most of his time on the astrolabe and similar types of things while in his dorm. Some point before the game, and likely after his final diary entry, Adler returned to the cycle. While in the cycle, he would perform certain tasks over and over again. These tasks would include pushing Ulster down the elevator, something that is theorized to have happened around 75 to 79 times, if one uses math to calculate the number of dead bodies, and battling Issa in the mines. He would repeat these actions every single cycle until the cycle that occurs within the events of the game. During the events of the game, we are first introduced to Adler following the Myina boss fight. He welcomes us into the facility following us defeating the boss. A visitor, welcome to our facility. You've caught us at an unfortunate time. How can I help you? I'm looking for a gestalt. A worker at our facility. Let me see that picture. Alanya Seo. I believe she's one of our factory workers. However, Alistair gives Adler the photograph of Alenia Co, as well as the West Wing key, which upon seeing, he discards and then pushes her down the elevator shaft, saying, You shouldn't have returned. We fall down the elevator before landing on a pile of dead versions of ourselves that fills the entire shaft from the 6th to the 5th floor. The next time we see Adler is when he discovers Issa is attempting to enter Falk's quarters. He approaches Issa, claiming to offer assistance, but Issa is clearly suspicious of his intentions. I'm afraid the commander won't receive any visitors at the moment, but perhaps I can be of assistance instead. Who are you? I'm the administrator of this facility. Please, there is no reason to be afraid. I'm just here to help. Following this, Issa runs away and it is assumed that Adler gives pursuit. Later, Elster gains access to Adler's quarters in the B8 floor of Serpansky. She takes Adler's administrator key and uses it to enter the elevators to the mines. Issa continues running from Adler in these mines, who has now acquired a rifle and is still searching for her. I know you're here. I've done this countless times before. You don't belong here. Issa then sneaks up on Adler and stabs him in the right eye, causing him to fall into the hole as well as drop his rifle, which she then takes. Elster later finds Adler sitting at the red gate in nowhere, with Issa's knife still stabbed in his eye. He tells Elster that Folk crossed the gate and fell sick afterwards. It's impossible to move on. I've been here so many times, but I have never returned. The commander never talked about what she saw out there. I'm sure whatever it was, it was what made her fall sick. Something about her changed when she returned. She was no longer our beloved leader, Folk. What waits beyond the threshold? Elster then ignores his warnings and uh, crosses the gate anyway, leaving Adler behind. As she continues beyond the gate into what is known as Eternity in the Code, we see an image of Adler and Falk at the Red Gate before Elster is fatally damaged. Following Elster's revival, we see a shot of Rotfront where Adler sits on the side of Falk's quarters. Here he makes several statements about the nature of the decay which reveals his own corruption, before kissing Falk and succumbing to the corruption himself, becoming a corrupted version of himself. You've changed. It's like everything was taken apart and put back together by someone who doesn't understand how it works. After Elster later defeats Folk and continues back to the gate, she is met by Adler, who is waiting for her. He tries to stop Elster from crossing, fearing that the world will be destroyed if she does. You've returned. Are you really willing to go through this again? You've seen what happens. This world cannot take much more. If you go back, it'll all fall apart. I cannot let that happen. You selfish monster. Adler stabs Elster in the eye, and she returns by shooting him with a pistol. Both Adler and Elster are mortally wounded by this exchange. Adler immediately falls to the floor. He repeats his warnings to Elster as she crosses the gate. You'll destroy everything. This is the end of our poor little administrator. He likely dies shortly after this exchange. But we can learn a tiny bit more about him by going to his dorm. Adler's dorm is a location on the 8th floor of S23 and was his personal room in S23. 
is also connected to his personal office. Looking around his room, one will find it's quite rather dark. Looking on his desk, you will find a file about his unit type, and behind his bed is a poster of Falk. Finally, the door leading into his personal quarters is decorated with a mural of an eagle, of which he is named after. In his office, one can find it is quite a mess and filled with papers. One such paper is the replica information page for Elster Geek, showcasing his desire for answers by looking into Elster. There's also his diary, as well as the astrolabe. Among, around that astrolabe is several playing cards with symbols that we know are used by several other puzzles, primarily the Rotfront Modenkind puzzle and the plate plates within Nowhere. These symbols seem to correlate to specific planets, which seems to play into the whole grand scheme of this item. Switching over to the theories from lore, there are really two major theories regarding Adler that I've covered and that I'd like to give time on now, and they're important for different ways. The first one is the theory that Adler's Gestalt is Nikolai. Um, Nikolai is a Gestalt mentioned in the medical database who is believed to be the Gestalt of Adler by some theorists. The evidence for is why would you introduce a random man with no plot relevance in the medical database? They must have some level of significance to be included. Adler and Nikolai, when put directly next to each other, used to look rather similar, which used to show some kind of relation, but as of update 1.1, this is no longer true. Uh, Nikolai is a writer, and Adler shows interest in not only pens, but also in writing in his diary. And Adler's Gestalt met Arion, and Nikolai living in the same cell block as Arion seems to connect them. Evidence against is a lot more heavy, in my opinion. The medical database is filled with characters that have very limited, if any, plot importance. For example, On, Gabriella, and Gao, Waltrud are two people who have no known connection anywhere else in the plot. Adler and Nikolai looking alike is perhaps the strongest evidence, but this got changed in newer updates, so it's not really palpable anymore. Adler does show interest in a pen, however in his Rabulka overview and issues page, there is nothing mentioned of having any care for pens or writing in general. Rather, it just states that he will need new fetish objects constantly. This would be something that would be mentioned there if the original of that type of replica was in fact a writer. The diary entry seems to disprove it as why is a writer in uniform and why would a writer be doing a test to Arianne? In case you forgot, the diary entry states, I had a dream tonight, another memory of my gestalt life, I believe. I was wearing my uniform. There was a young woman, her hair white as snow, and I was conducting some sort of test. I had a deck of cards with astronomical symbols on them and answered her yes to the planet on the card I was holding. This also suggests that Adler's gestalt was a bioresonant agent of the country of some sort, which, again, a writer wouldn't be. Um, the existence of Calibris, while both the interrogator and Nikolai being around does seem to discourage that theory. Nikolai is younger than both Issa and Erica, as well as Ariane, so how did he manage to interrogate her and become a replica with Ariane still being around? And finally, Ariane mentions in her notes that she knew Adler units, and how could that be possible if the gestalt of the Adler units was still younger than her while she was meeting these units that it just, to me, doesn't make a lot of sense. The second theory, though, is Adler is overtaken by the king. Um, Adler throughout the game seems to change greatly from those early diary entries to the first cycles to the end. He goes from scared and confused, cautious and opposing, to boldly opposing Alster. A uh, possible explanation of this could be found from the reference that Adler plainly quotes upon being corrupted, I wear no mask. This quote stated by the Pallid King from the King in Yellow was said by a character who is heavily suggested to be a messenger of the king, or in some interpretations, a quite literal manifestation of the king. We understand from the diary entries that Adler went down into the mines to speak to the flesh to find answers, and combine it with his model's weakness to bioresonance. It could suggest that upon going down there, he became infested by the king, and thus his actions in the first act of the game were done out of the false truth he was told. The degree of this corruption seems to increase greatly following Elster's revival. Before her revival, Adler stated that he never returns from the gate. This is not only proof of the finality of this new cycle, but also proof that the Adler we see beyond this point is someone that is far beyond any other cycle has ever taken him. Um, and this is also supported by his composure in the final confrontation, where he stands bold before the gate and openly antagonizes Elster with a degree far beyond anything we've seen in his earlier actions, which does seem to suggest he has changed 
from his earlier iterations. And that's all I've got. Adler is very complex, and I feel like even in this video where I tried to cover everything about him, I still don't think I've truly captured the interesting and, and the depth of the plot around him, but hopefully, at least partially was conveyed uh, the importance this character holds in the lore and the deeper story that the devs were able to tell regarding him. If you'd like to talk to other Signalis fans about the lore, or just in general, in my description I have my main Discord VSL linked. It's where I'll be discussing theories and lore and just anything about Signalis as we just march forward together into the future of discussing the lore and the universe as a whole. So hopefully some of y'all swing over. Finally, once again, if you enjoyed, always feel free to drop comments, likes, and subscribes. I really appreciate all of them. So with that, this has been Christopher Beast, and I'll see you all, well, next time.